Hi and welcome. Today we are doing a hobby project that you can do yourself at home. You don't really require any specific tools other than the ones I'm going to show you soon. And what are we building, you're wondering? We're actually building this, so check this out. Whoa! <laughs> so we get some added color, some added light. The fun thing here is that we can actually change colors. So depending on what we need, we can get totally different colors if we want to have something. So that's pretty awesome. Let's check it out. Let's do it. You'll of course find all the parts down in the description and at the article at the link as well. But we're getting one of these 5 meter LED strips, RGB strips, that can be cut off at different lengths. So we have this spool, uh, and I think it's really good because it comes with a few accessories. So it comes with the, this uh, power thingy, converter, um, that uses the included power supply as well. So we can power up the LEDs. And what's really good is we also get a remote so we can control everything outside. Now, I won't be using the controller. I will instead be using one of these and have on the back side. So this is a touch uh, color and power thingy. So it's actually made for putting in walls, but it works great on this as well. So I want to have this on the back side so we can control all the LEDs from there. Also, we need these connectors. We will use these to stitch together uh, different cuts of the LED strip. And that's going to be super easy to work with instead of having to solder and, and do a lot of things like that. Of course, we need some tools. We need to measure all the components. We need some filament for printing. I'm not going to use the black one, but yeah, just for show. And we're actually going to use an aluminum foil and some plastic bags and, and you want to have these frosted uh, freezing bags because they diffuse the lights much better. And that's the whole goal here, it's to uh, use cheap components, cheap tools, uh, something that you can do at home and with that said, I think we can start going. The project was modeled in Fusion 360 as always, as I usually do, but I don't want to bore you with the whole video, but basically I just measure the components and do some modeling to get it all done, so this is that. <laughs> At the end we get something like this. Four pieces and some legs that will be printed in, in separate stages. Speaking of that, I'm using the BCN Sigma, running some fast settings just to get it all done. Well, it's not this fast, this is a time lapse, you know, but <laughs> still. I had some issues there with infill, but ah, who cares, it's gonna work anyway. This is the last part, you actually don't need the clamps, so uh, you just ignore them if you want to print this product yourself. So these are the parts that we need. The quality isn't the best, but that doesn't really matter. So this will be the orientation with the ledges up. And this part with the controllable don't have one. Uh, the controller will be here. Lead steps will be up here on this side, going from edge to edge. And the holes here are actually used to hide the cable. So when you can bend these down, so you don't have to have the cables disturbing the light on the inside. The edges here, the legs will just be pushed down in the uh, slots here. The smaller fins are not needed. First of all, we need to just glue everything here together. So um, I'm using just regular super glue and that works just fine. And then uh, just glue everything together and in pieces. The, the weight is really low, so you don't have to have a lot of power. Next up, we take our LED controller. On the back side here, we are going to plug in the power supply on the V plus and V minus on inputs. So we can use a 12 to 24 volts, the included one that we got. We can actually cut off this part here, so the dotted one is usually positive, but make sure you check the polarity first. Just cutting that off, splitting the wires, stripping them, twisting of course, and then we just have to insert it. Again, check polarity before doing this, but in my case, the plus is the dotted. So you're screwing that down. And then since we want to test everything out and test the controller, you just see that we have everything in order. I'm just going to cut one of the um, um, connectors off here. We can then strip all these wires and put them in, in the respective blue, green, red and voltage plus on the LED strips. 
I know it's a little bit confusing having red and black, but the black is actually voltage here. And the red is red. So we get this connector, we can open it up and we just take one of the LED strips that I had before. So now we need to cut this so you can see that the, the copper markings here, there are actually dotted lines. So I'm just gonna cut one off, insert in the uh, plug here. This is one of the end of my LED, uh, the five meter LED strip. So that's why we can use it. So we just plug that in and turn everything on and it actually works. So that's pretty awesome. Just gonna turn off the light here for you. Ah, look at that. That looks really awesome. And yeah, we do get some different modes. We can use some uh, uh, pulsating and some blinking and just increase and decrease color with the uh, plus and minus symbols. Next up, it's time to just take all the LED strips, uh, cut a few in, in a good length. Now we can just run the power up here from the um, LED controller and just start plugging it in. So, uh, and, and then of course you can just remove the sticky tape on the back side and just repeat really. This will take a few minutes and I actually ended up having it all turned on so I can see if my connectors are uh, getting connection between the different, con um, the different connectors because these clamps, they tend to be a little bit tricky. So when plugging these in, just make sure that you check all the time that you get a light because if one of the first connectors isn't working, all the other ones won't get this, that color as well. So just make sure that as you build, uh, you can detect any errors. Okay, so after some fixing with all the connectors, we have something like this. It doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to hide it later. Now, I did have to do some repairs here because my connectors were struggling a little bit. Now, when I turn this on, you can see that all the LEDs are working. I'm just going to turn off this light. So that's looking super good, but you might think that this is a little bit uh, dotty or so to say. So that's exactly why we're going to use the plastic bag. So if you just put them close, it's not going to look that pretty. But as soon as you take it uh, a little bit further away, we get this diffused light. So the plan is to have, you can see it's really cool how, how it changes depending on how far and how close you are. So this is what will be used on the top as a diffuser. But to help it out a little bit, we will use the aluminum foil to reflect on the inside so we get a much better light output. So we're focusing the light a little bit. So to do all this, we need to, we're gonna use these edges. So I printed these. I know that they're not the prettiest, but they're just supposed to be able to uh, help you when you're taping everything up. So uh, in a future version, we might, we might do this a little bit better, but yeah, and it's uh, totally up to you how much you want to fill up with LEDs. You could do it quite a lot more than I did, but... So, with the aluminum foil, all we really have to do is to uh, take out approximately what we need. So, one edge here. Cut it, fold it once. So, we get a little bit more thickness. Then you can actually fold the two edges a little bit again. That should be fine. And then we can, uh, well, basically, Get it on the inside here. You can just wrap it around, something like that. And then fold down the, uh, the top here. Again, this is not rocket science, it's just to help with the light. And putting it on here. So if we turn off the lights, we can see that it's actually starting to reflect much better. And especially when we are putting on, but as soon as we tape on this, it's gonna be super nice. I'm just gonna fill up the sides with aluminum as well, and then we'll take it from there. Now, we are gonna drag some tape strips around this. So don't worry, it won't be as janky as it is. We do have this firm point, so when, if you wanna support it by putting it upside down, that should work fine. Okay, so next step is just securing it by tape or if you want to use glue, that's totally fine as well. So you just secure it and you fold the tape underneath the downside. And just make sure that the aluminum foil sticks to it. And when we're done with that, it's time to just stickly tape on the plastic bags. So you can choose your own uh, diffuseness, how, which means how much diffuse you want to have. I'm going to go with just one bag. I think that's going to be perfect for, for what I need. So taking it on one side and on the other side. That's looking pretty sweet. 
Blocks of tape being one piece of tape on the inside, just so I can get some uh, plastic bag to just sit together a little bit better. It is cheap, just do it yourself. But hey, it's it's really low cost and uh, it's really fun as well to build this stuff. There we go. That was the last piece. I'm just gonna finish up the edges a little bit and I will show you the light later. All right, so if we then put the, everything on a tripod, which we wanna do, I'm just gonna turn on the light. So something like this. Um, we can, when we turn on the lights, we can of course uh, choose all our different colors. Now, it isn't the strongest, of course, it depends on how many LEDs you want to put in, but you can still get the color effect you want to do. So I'm going to turn off the top light so you can see a little bit more clearly. Now, the light here helps to diffuse everything, so that's why we use the plastic bag, so we get a diffused light instead of these uh, typical shadows that you get from an LED light. So we have much, much softer shadows, which is superb. And we can also, of course, just change the color depending on what kind of effect we want to have. So, um, yeah, for example, we want to go with something a little bit... Yeah, we can go on the back. <laughs> of course, go strobe disco if you want to have that. And uh, even better. Oops, sorry about that. And of course, dimming. So if you are doing some cool photography, filming, product photos and stuff like that, you can get some pretty cool effects from this. Now, of course, you can always combine this with other lights and having it as a, like a, a effect light. So let's say that we are taking a photograph like this. We have a setup which is basically super simple. So this is the setup here. We have one light over the side and the other one here is just poking down. And we are getting some lights effect here. We can, if we want to control the light now and change the whole scene, and get some different types of lighting. Maybe we want to have a super warm light, like so, to combine with everything. And maybe we'll dim in another light a little bit to get some extra, extra reflections. We can play around a lot here with different types of lights and scenarios and getting this, this extra little color on the model and uh, getting different sides. Now this is not the prettiest on black. Maybe uh, something green. And you can of course combine it with many lights. So I think this is gonna be a super nice effect to have and it's gonna be nice in future videos. So I'm really happy. So with that said, I really hope you enjoy this video. It's a little bit uh, hands-on, jerry-rigging everything, but I think this is, this is what you do as a creator. I don't have a tool shop, I don't have tools where I can just saw wood and stuff like that. So uh, I just have my cardboard, my tape, my LEDs and stuff like that. So I think this is the perfect way of showing how you can do stuff um, easily and cheap by combining 3D printing. Now you could probably just take some cardboard and, and get it done anyways, but now there's a file that you can print. It's easier to extend it and shorten it how you want to do it. And uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's pretty fun. So I hope you enjoy it, hope you learned something. And if not, let me know what else I should do. And of course, if you have any improvements and tips and tricks, anything you want to see me do, just drop a comment down below and we'll get it sorted. So with that said, make sure you get to be one of the patrons swinging down right now. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.